Hello, everyone. I'm here to talk about two ideas today, education and confidence. My early education was very different. I grew up in a small town in eastern India called Jamshedpur, where the Tata steel factories are. I was born in a one-room house, but what I had in abundance was, of course, apart from my parents' affection, was their understanding of what good education meant. When a child is just two or three, parents go around town looking for the best school for their child. Some families even move homes to find a place which is close to the best school. That is how important early education is in the minds of a parent. Even in those early years, it is extremely crucial. However, unfortunately, a lot of parents feel that finding the best school is enough. But if you look at schools around the world, they only have six to eight hours to complete an existing set of subjects, subjects that have not changed over decades. Maybe the pedagogies are different in different parts of the world. The teacher-student ratios can be very different in different parts of the world. Somewhere physics is more application-based, somewhere it's more theory-based. But broadly, no matter where you have gone to school, if you have gone to school, school, let's say, in Japan, I have gone to school in the US, and someone has gone to school in India, and we all have finished school, the expectation is that we all know pretty much the same things parts of the body, skeletal system, solar system, algebra, etc. What schools miss is to build the confidence in children to face the real world. And that is what truly matters when it comes to achieving success in life. My mother, she comprehended this very well. She educated me beyond school, even in the very early years. My mother, would save on her monthly home budget to buy me volumes of this Tell Me Why book, half of which didn't even honestly make sense to me at that age. It was a routine for me to follow the news and to read more outside textbooks. She went around town finding this one local vendor who used to sell this child magazine called Wisdom every month. My mother took me to events and competitions and encouraged me to participate. Just in my early years, I have more than 200 awards in debates, elocution, and creative writing. Imagine the number of competitions that she took me to, because surely I lost many too. All these learnings and experiences did one thing to me. It built my self-confidence. I knew that I was equipped. And this showed for the first time when I went for my undergraduate studies. I went to IIT Kharagpur. And once you are in a place like IIT with a 2% admission rate, everybody, everybody around you is smart or smarter in traditional education. What sets you apart then? It is your confidence. It is your ability to think on your feet, be able to talk confidently. It is your ability to grab opportunities. It is your ability to raise your hand up in a class and speak up. Confidence is essential. And this confidence does not come overnight. This confidence does not come from school alone. This confidence does not come from a three-month public speaking or a personality development program. This confidence comes from a decade of systematic and rich training in the very early foundational years of your life. And this confidence took me to places. At 20, I flew from India to the US for the first time for an internship. It might not sound like a big deal today, but it was a big deal for a girl from a small town who had not even traveled to places in her own country to travel alone all the way to a distant country. At IIT, this confidence helped me get the most coveted job. At job, this confidence helped me get quicker promotions. I worked at the world's largest oil field services company in the deep seas of the Gulf of Mexico and Africa. Instead of Ubers, I took choppers to work, and I worked on ships. I led large teams and handled multi-million dollar p &Ls, taking up roles in US, India, Africa, and London. And I traveled to more than 30 countries for work and leisure. This confidence-driven education gave me a lot in life. At this point, 
I decided to apply to the Mecca of Education, Harvard. Sitting in that classroom, alongside sons, daughters, and grandchildren of CEOs, presidents, and global leaders, I could truly feel the power of confidence. You get opportunities when you are confident. It pushes you to take chances. There was one more observation here. The powerful case method of learning at Harvard demanded students to speak up. More than 50% of our grades were based on classroom participation. So no matter how great you are at making those financial models on Excel, or coding fancy apps, or doing the best surgeries in the world, you would still need to speak up in class to be able to graduate. Communication and contributing to classroom discussion was a major part of my education here. It was not enough to just take tests. It was important and essential to find the confidence to raise your hand up in that classroom, that classroom full of 90 smartest minds in the world. Also, this was the first time when I truly enjoyed the classroom learning experience. Education for the first time was meaningful, relevant, and most importantly, fun. This was the first place where I could see that my knowledge in the classroom directly translated to my confidence in the real world. Education and confidence in the real world came together here. The two years at Harvard went by very quickly. I met some exceptional people, made great friends, learned a lot. But my best memory by far is when I had my parents in class. The joy and pride that I could see on their faces as they sat in a Harvard classroom, watching their daughter confidently participate in a global discussion was priceless. A lot of what I have been able to achieve in my life is purely because of the confidence that a good education gives you. My obligation to the education sector has led me to work in this space for more than 10 years. By then, it was more than 10 years. Even as a young child, I used to teach mathematics to IIT aspirants back in the day. From working in Teach for India, training fresh graduates on technical skills in Abu Dhabi, being a faculty-nominated tutor at Harvard, to working in an edtech startup in China. I've always enjoyed teaching just as much I have enjoyed learning. So I decided to quit my job in the US and get on my mission to make education relevant, that is useful and engaging, that is fun, for the two billion school-going kids worldwide. What is the point of parents spending so much time, so much money, so much energy in finding the best schools for their child, in finding the best education for their child, if ultimately the child is not confident outside taking tests? What is the point in parents spending so much attention if the child is not able to reach his or her full potential just because he or she was never trained to be confident in the early years? But why is confidence even important? Why am I talking about education and confidence here today? I'll tell you. There are two big issues with low confidence. One of the biggest challenges with low confidence is that, unfortunately, many people perceive lack of confidence as a sign of incompetence. He didn't sound confident. I don't think he knows it. He would have often heard this. A completely unjustified correlation, but it is what it is. The second thing is, confidence is a determinant of financial outcome in life, and this is research back. A recent article published by NBC points out that in white-collar masses, people with high self-esteem earn approximately 28,000 US dollars more annually compared to people with low confidence. Over a 40-year career, that adds up to 1.12 million US dollars of just loss in earning potential because you are not confident. My mother, she combined education and confidence very well. And I wanted to do the same for every school-going child in the world. With the privilege of advice from some of the top minds in education, and my, working with my professors from Harvard, I started research. The two years of research that I did, I finally came up with a curriculum that makes school children 10x confident in the real world. 
children today need to go beyond the fixed subjects. They need to learn about a range of modern essential subjects from entrepreneurship, cryptocurrency, NFT, climate change, space tech. And the onus is on us, the educators, to put the information in front of children in their language, in a manner that they can comprehend, in a manner that makes learning engaging and fun. The world has changed, and so should education. Educators, parents, and teachers should not just focus on knowledge, but rather focus on the skills of thinking and speaking, the raw skills of thinking and speaking. They should focus on how they can train children on critical thinking, structured thinking, and communication. Education should be global, just like our workplaces. Education should give children a taste of the real world, outside textbooks, exams, schools, and grades. That is the only way we can make sure that our children are truly competent and comfortable and confident to take on the challenges of the 21st century world. Through my career, I have met parents and teachers and students from more than 20 countries. And it is heartwarming to hear stories of parents when they tell how the right training, how the right knowledge and training tangibly change how children think and how it changes their mindset and instill confidence in them. Education is powerful. And for you to seize that power, you need to be confident. Education is the only sector in the world that has the power to make such significant cross-generational transformation. Unlike being a celebrity or a soccer player, where only the top 1% get to the top and have a real life-changing experience despite all the hard work, good education can make dramatic changes in the lives of each one and everyone from where they started. Look at me. I'm an example of that transformation. And today, as I look back at my life with a heart full of gratitude, I'm training the next generation of confident leaders to make sure that they can face the new world by educating them on subjects and skills that truly matter. As a society, it is time for us to reflect on what and how our children are learning. Is it enough to learn the same things and in the same manner that I learned, my parents and my grandparents learned? The world today is changing at an unprecedented pace. When we were young, entrepreneurship was not a real word. There was no cryptocurrency, no climate change, no NFT, no Web3. Tomorrow, there'll be many, many new things that will come up, which you and I don't even know of today. So in that case, how do we make sure that we are giving an education to the next generation that is modern and complete? That the next generation, that the children of today who are the next generation, feel comfortable and confident to face the world tomorrow, no matter how that world looks like. Remember, the kids of today will be the people who would run the world for you tomorrow. So if you want to make sure that you have a great world for you, if you want to make sure that you get your pensions, you get your doctors and the peace, make sure that you train today's kids to be confident in the real world by empowering them with the right education. Thank you.